and what you're expecting. Well, very, very excited. You know, thank you to the FIA and the president of FIA for putting uh, the expression of interest out there. It was very vigorous. It was very tough things to go through for our team. And uh... the Monaco Grand Prix F1 Crown Jewel has got tongues wagging. With the contract up soon, questions are flying. Can Monte Carlo's iconic race up its game? You see, Monaco has been the most prized jewel of F1, the pinnacle of speed, glamour and prestige. But here's the thing, the contract between Monaco and F1 is coming to an end after next year's event. And in the meantime, they've got quite wild during Sunday's race. For the first time ever in F1 history, the top 10 drivers started the race in the same order they finished in qualifying. Intense, right? The opening lap was utter chaos. Sergio Perez and Kevin Magnussen were going wheel to wheel, only to tangle up and collect poor Nico Hülkenberg's Haas in a mess. Debris was flying around, tensions was high, and before we knew it, the red flag was waving. Now, here's the stinging question on everyone's mind. With all this drama and lack of action, does the Monaco Grand Prix need a shake-up to keep the excitement alive? Let's take a deep look at it. You see, when the race abruptly stopped, the track buzzed with activity as teams hurried to change tyres. Everyone opted for a fresh rubber, meaning no more pit stops were needed, setting the stage for an intense showdown. But amidst all of this, one driver's luck took a bad hit. Carlos Sainz, who found himself back in his starting spot after a gut-wrenching puncture during the original start. And what was behind it? A collision with Oscar Piastri sent him falling to the back of the pack. Now, let's talk about another draw-dropping fact that emerged from the Grand Prix. There were not a single overtake in the top 10 throughout the entire 77 laps of the race. Unbelievable, right? The tension was thick as drivers tried to jostle for position, but the tight streets of Monaco made overtaking nearly impossible. But even though the front was stuck in a deadlock, there was plenty of drama further down the field. Charles Leclerc, who is supposed to be the hometown hero, put on a performance, winning in front of his cheering fans. And then there was a nail-biting battle for seventh place, with George Russell holding off Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. It was a frustrating day. Despite fresh tyres, they couldn't make any real progress throughout the field. After the race, Verstappen vented his frustration at the lack of excitement, stating that they had finished where they had started. He jokingly mentioned that the strategy had been messed up during the red flag. According to him, from the restart, it had felt like driving four seconds slower and relaxing, with no action at all. He described it as really, really dull. It was a feeling shared by many as fans and drivers alike pondered the anti-climax nature of the race. Now, let's move on to the next major question. Have F1's cars outgrown Monaco? Well, we'd say it's a debatable that it's been gaining traction, and it's for some good reason. In Monaco, the streets are narrow and the margins for error are razor thin. With F1 cars now 2 metres wide and around 5.5 metres long since 2017, navigating these tight confines is no easy feat, especially when you're trying to make a daring overtake. Chris Horner, the Red Bull team's boss, said what a lot of people were thinking. He mentioned that it doesn't feel like real racing when you're just driving a few seconds slower than the fastest car because then no one can pass you. Now, one thing we've got to agree on, Monaco, with its rich history and iconic status, is undeniably a spectacular event. But as the cars have grown in size over the years, so too have the challenges of racing on its streets. Horner pointed out that things change over time and he thinks that the cars nowadays are much bigger compared to cars from 10 years ago. They're almost twice the size. He emphasised that everyone in the sport needs to work together to tackle this problem. And the numbers speak volumes. In the last 30 years, the highest number of overtakes at Monaco was a mere 23, and that was in a wet race. In dry conditions, the most overtakes recorded were 17 in 2006, with several races seeing zero on-track overtakes, including 2003 and 2021. But this isn't a new problem for F1. Even when cars were slightly smaller in the past, Toto Wolff, the Mercedes team principal, summed it up well by saying that while Monaco as the event is amazing, the race in itself has been a bit dull for a long time, regardless of whether the cars were small or big. So, what do you think is the solution? Some suggest tweaking the layout to introduce overtaking opportunities, while others believe that strategic factors or adverse weather conditions are the key to spicing up the action. Whatever the case, one thing is clear. Monaco holds a special place in the hearts of fans and drivers alike, and any challenges must be carefully considered to preserve its unique charm. Lewis Hamilton's intriguing suggestion for shaking things up in the Monaco Grand Prix was to bring out a set of Monaco Edition tyres. Now, we all know that Monaco is notorious for being a one-stop race, thanks to its low tyre degradation and the sheer difficulty of overtaking, even with fresh rubber. But rewind to 2011, when Pirelli made its return to F1 and the Monaco race that year was a strategic playground, with drivers opting for one, two or even three stop strategies due to the high tyre wear. 
Fast forward to the present day and the strategy has become pretty straightforward. Just one pit stop. And that is one of the reasons for the lack of action on track. But Hamilton's bold idea really makes some sense. You see, tyres are designed specifically for the twists and turns on the Monaco Carlo circuit, with more pit stops to spice up the action. It's a concept that could inject some much needed variability into the race, providing fans with the unpredictability that they crave. And hey, why stop there? Hamilton even suggests the possibility of sprint weekends or other initiative formats tailored specifically for Monaco. It's a radical idea, but one that could breathe new life into the iconic event. Meanwhile, for Saints, he holds for the Monaco Grand Prix. It's true, Monaco isn't just any track, it's a cornerstone of Formula One, dating back to the inaugural 1950 F1 World Championship calendar. Alongside iconic circuits like Silverstone, Monza and spa Franca Champs, Monaco stands as a testament to the sport's rich heritage, having graced the F1 calendar almost every year since 1955, except for the unfortunate cancellation in 2020. For Sands, who has found himself on the podium in three of the last four Monaco Grand Prix, the allure of this circuit is undeniable. He said, sorry for those who disagree, but he strongly believes that Monaco is the best and will always be the best. And many others at the event felt the same way. However, amidst the reverence for Monaco's unmatched charm and prestige, Sainz candidly addressed a notable drawback, the lack of on-track excitement, particularly during the race. He acknowledged that the only thing that outlines Monaco is the spectacle on race day, which he admits can be a bit dull at times. Yet instead of dismissing the event's shortcomings, Sands advocated for proactive measures to enhance the racing spectacle. He proposed that if there's a chance to create a place for overtaking in Monaco, organisers should study the city and its layout carefully and make changes to make it possible. He believes that doing so would make Monaco an even more exciting track. Despite Monaco's undisputed reign at the epitome of glamour and lure in F1, Sands recognised the importance of continuous improvement. He thought that even if changes were made, people would still look forward to Sunday. Monaco's glamour will always be unbeatable, and we shouldn't overlook the positive change that circuits like Amola and Monaco can make in the future. This underscores the delicate balance between honouring traditional and embracing innovation as Formula One endeavours to evolve with preserving the essence of its most cherished circuits. Monaco's significance transcends mere competition. It embodies the pinnacle of motorsport, where history interwines with contemporary prowess. From the iconic harbour to the renowned Casino Square, each twist and turn of the circuit tells a story of triumph and spectacle. Yet, as the sport evolves and drivers push the boundaries of performance, the need for adaption becomes apparent. Anyway, amidst all the disappointment, there were lessons to be learned and questions to be asked. How can we eject more excitement into the Monaco Grand Prix? Is it time for a radical redesign of the track, or maybe a shake-up of the race format? These are the burning questions that will fuel discussions in the days to come, as Formula One strives to be the perfect balance between traditional and innovation. After all, it's the charm of the narrow streets and tight corners that make Monaco so special. So, if we can't change the track, why not change the game? What do you think? Do drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and like it for more awesome content. Make sure to hit that notification bell too, so you never miss an update. Until next time, stay awesome, and we'll be back with you with another one.